Hello everyone and welcome to Ulysseus European University. Today, 24th of September, we are celebrating the European Researchers' Night, a Europe-wide public event which aims at bringing research and researchers closer to public and to showcase the impact of their work on people's daily life. For this occasion, we are interviewing a number of scientists and researchers from the six partner universities of Ulysseus. It's a great pleasure to introduce you Adele Ben Youssef, who is the Doctor of Economics and Professor of Economics, Digital Economics and Environment. Um, and he's a lecturer at the Université Coctasu and a member of the CNRS Research Laboratory. He teaches at the Higher Institute of Economics and Management and has published over 80 academic papers in different academic journals. Dr. Adele ben Youssef is an international expert in climate change, environment and the circular economy for many international institutions. His areas of expertise include climate policies, industry for um, 4.0, energy transition and climate finance. Thank you very much for joining us Adele and welcome to our series of interviews for the European Researchers Night. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you. So why did you choose to work in science? Um, mainly because I'm curious. Curiosity leads to science. When you are curious, you pose so many questions on your own and you expect someone to provide you with answer. So some of the answer convince you and the others do not, you have some depths. And that's why I start by posing some hypothesis, uh, trying to make this experience and to provide answer. And uh, this curiosity leads me to my field, which is science. And we try to provide youngs and people and the society with some answer to their problems and concerns. Great. So uh, could you explain to everyone what's your area of expertise? Um, let me say that I have two uh, main areas of expertise, digitalization and, uh, and the green transition. Digitalization because uh, I think that every, everyone is seeing that our world is transforming. There are so many new technology arriving and these technology are changing our way of living, our way of uh, educating people, our way of uh, working, etc. So the, the one of the questions that we pose is what what are the impacts of this technology on the behavior of people, especially in the field of education and the field of work, the labor market. And uh, our angle here is to understand the change in the scope uh, of the uh, the skills. What we call the e skills are becoming core skills now in the work and in the education. And we are try, trying to provide some uh, evidence about this change with my PhD student. The second topic is the green transition. As uh, economics, uh, economists, we understand that there is two components of, of this big challenge. One is science from the science let me see. Um, let me say that uh, this is the core science: innovation, in, in, invention, etc. And the, the other one is uh, from the behavioral perspective. People need to change, and uh, I try. I have tried to address this question since 25 years. How the adoption of the eco labels in the in the consumption. Um, in, in the in, in, in the markets can change the consumption behavior, for example. And uh, nowadays we are seeing that with the COVID-19, people have changed their way of living and their way of uh, behaving with this uh, new kind of uh, uh, consumption, etc. So um, I'm trying to address these two different fields and also to link them in a way that how this technology can help combating of climate change, for example. Great. So how does um, uh, this research field contribute to a more sustainable, th these two uh, research fields contribute to a more sustainable Europe? In, in my field of expertise as economists, we are advisor of the prince <laughs> in a way. That means that we need to better assess the economic and environmental policies because we need to act and to make policies. But we need 
to make this based on uh, data, data, data driven decision making we need to do. So as economics and researchers in social science, we are benefiting, benefiting from the availability of this data nowadays. And we are making more assumptions and we try to see what are the best policy in, you, in order to induce the change, the, this behavioral change. So this is a big question for Europe, especially for the energy saving, for energy e efficiency or for the other, uh, in, in other topics. So we are better assessing the policies, evaluating these policies and providing new option of policies. Great. So could you tell us where, where one exciting project that you're working on? Yeah, one of the exciting projects is uh, quantifying the rebound effect in France and more largely in Europe. What is the rebound effect? As uh, so many countries are trying to improve energy efficiency, that means that we need to do the same activity with using less energy. But while all the European countries have invested hugely in energy efficiency, the results are not here. The results are not is are far from the expectation and this is due of a component of the change of the behavior behavioral change so people are not change, changing their behavior and the, the problem of the quantification of this rebound effect is that the rebound effect means that when you have for example devices saving energy people um, are con making consumption more of this energy because they said it's saving energy and the overall effect is negative. So the problem is about quantification. There are so many methods of quantification, we have no pro evidence. We have tried to make a new quantification methodology and we assess this in the context of France. And we so we quantify it for different category of uh, peoples. And we provide really that uh, all the categories of people are not behaving in the same as regard the rebound, the rebound effect. And we, we, with this, we have several policy implications that we have uh, uh, assessed and we, uh, we, uh, we also communicate to the authorities in France. Great. So you've mentioned earlier about the importance of behavioral change. Could you tell people one thing that they can do to contribute to a more sustainable Europe? Yeah, of course. Um, as I previously mentioned, a more sustainable Europe needs a strong change in the behavior of people vis-a-vis -vis consumption of products and lifestyle. That means that we need less products, but we need uh, more quality of the product to consume more in quality. This is a qualitative change and they can do it this with uh, by saving water, saving energy, saving the resources and consuming the, the products that they are more friendly, eco-friendly. And we have instrument now in the market showing what are the products that are eco-friendly. So if they want to consume eco-friendly, there are eco-labels, they can consume eco-labeled products. That's great. That's a really great tip. Yeah, and this can make more sustainable Europe and better quality of life. OK, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adele, for taking part in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.